G'day legends, welcome back to the Rugby League Guru Podcast, something very special today, obviously we've got the CBA Bowl coming your way tomorrow night, 7.45 from Leichhardt Oval for the men's, 5.45 for the women's game, and I think we've got a schoolboy game before that as well, so it's all going to be happening out there at Leichhardt Oval, I'm going to be out there on the hill, there's going to be food, food trucks, Brewskies, it's all going to be happening. I cannot wait for it. The CBA Bowl, the under-19s, State of Origin. There's a link in the description if you would like to buy tickets. There's a two-for-one offer via Rugby League Guru there. So go check out that. Grab a ticket. Come along. If not, make sure you're watching on TV. Telecast will be unreal as well. Now... As with all of my CBA content and my young guys, you've got to find the best in the business. And I have, once again, Jacob from the Short Ball. Welcome in, bro. How are you? Yeah, good, mate. Yourself? Going well. Last time I saw you, I think you are on the floor of a venue uh, at Magic Round. <laughs> yeah, it was a good little time over there. Um, thought I'd pop in and say good day after the uh, games. We had uh, uh, Timmy Williams in here before, and I said, oh, um, uh, Jacob's going to come in from the Short Ball. Have you met him? And Tim goes, oh, I'm not sure I go he was in that room with us for the live show and then I, I thought about it more and I was like, there's about 5,000 dribblers in that room that was probably smaller than this room, so I'll forgive you. <laughs> yeah, no, I've I seen Timmy in there, but um, probably about 100 bodies in between him and me too, so. Good God, that was one hell of a room. There was a lot happening there. Now, mate, on your front, uh, since last time we spoke, we've obviously had SG Ball, Harold Matz, all done and dusted. You've obviously been getting stuck into your jersey flag, New South Wales Cup. Probably the biggest event since then, though. Yeah, this is it. Um, you know, between this and schoolboy footy, this is what makes up me winter. So, how good and mate? Uh, as far as New South Wales Cup jersey flag, how's, how's this season sort of played out? As you expected it to, or any standout teams, players that have sort of come from no, no, nowhere for you at this point? Um, it's been good to watch mm. New South Wales Cup. Um, very high scoring this year. Yeah. Which, well, you know, it's not exactly based on defense it's about you know guys getting out there trying to show what they can do and attack and uh, making their way to the first grade squad but it's been particularly high scoring this year yeah um in terms of teams that have surprised me um watching the panthers and the eels and their contrasting season so far eels started the year oh and six and they've been uh they've lost one game since then and panthers started the game eight Eight wins, one draw, zero losses. They've just lost six on six on the trot. Wow! In, by big margins. So that's the um, that's how enjoyable New South Wales Cup can be. Yeah, you know, wow. Anything could happen. The Jersey flag. I've obviously been watching a bit of, mate. And fuck, it's hard to get a read on that competition. Oh, impossible! It's literally impossible. Yeah. Like you've got you know five to six teams that look like they can win it on their day and then they'll come out the next week and lose by 40 because half their squad's been taken to New South Wales Cup. Yeah, and, and even like this game here obviously took a lot of players out of flag as well. So, yeah, it's been an interesting couple of weeks there. Now, mate, this game, um, I think that it is fantastic. The NRL put this game on. I am really looking forward to it. We've seen a lot of stars that have obviously come out of this game over the years. Obviously, it's been under-19s for the last, I think, three years. I think it got cancelled in 21 because of COVID. Yeah, 21 it got cancelled. 21. So we've had 22, 23. This will be the third one. Previously, we've obviously had like under-21s and under-20s, which a heap of stars have come out of. I think the big talking point out of last year was the performance of probably Ethan Strange. It's probably the one that's kicked on the most. And, mate, I'm super excited to see which guys jump out of the ground from this one. Yeah, last year was an unbelievable game to start off with, like the intensity, like Samuel mm. Lafayne was in that game, obviously, oh, yeah. um, famously sin-binned at the start for standing up for his brother. But, like, that's the sort of physicality that you come to expect from these games. And then Ethan Strange um, obviously had a blinder, and I think it was Gus Gould with one of the all-time calls. He could put his hand down the toilet, pull out a gold watch. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that was a super game last year, and this is a really good form guide to sort of see – who your club's next stars are. Yeah, for sure. I think that uh, similar final, I remember, like I obviously watched him play juniors and I always thought he was really good, but I walked away from that game thinking this guy might be too much of a lunatic to make it. Mate, ever since then, he has been so good and it seems like he's really got his head screwed on now. Mate, that sort of aggression was always a trademark of his game coming through and when he was at Manly and all that sort of stuff. And, mate, since he's gone to the Tigers, I don't know what Benji's done, but he's got him – like controlled aggression now like mm. he's coming out and uh he, even his game up against the titans on the weekend i thought he was super impressive um really targeted um he's opposing man and you know i think he's really grown as a football over the last 12 months yeah now mate when i had a look at these team lists that came out for this game 
to be honest with you, it sort of ticked most of the boxes I was looking for, the key guys that I was most excited to see or hoping to see. We've got most of them. You follow these guys, uh, I was going to say a little, a lot closer than, than what I do. You, you are inside out them week in, week out. What sort of stood out for, for you, mate? We'll start with the New South Wales side. Just from a team list point of view, what jumped out at you? Uh, my first reaction was actually why Chevy was there. I thought Raiders would would pull him and because they have him in obviously in first grade and all that. But, you know, um, for him to get a second chance mm. at, in this game will be good to see. And uh, I think he'll take a bit of improvement um, out of that. Um, in terms of the overall side, like first thing I noticed, and it would be something that you'd notice too if you saw a, a New South Wales side picked, they've gone with all left side players in the yep. back five, um, which – could become an issue um but yeah apart from that like from about six down to 20 is about how you pick it like i, I did a predicted team list um a couple of weeks ago and yeah that six to 20 was pretty much picked itself yeah we'll talk about that back line soon initial reaction to the queensland side mate uh ben Teo's side there what jumped out at you um i liked i liked the back line here jackson purdue through to tyrese tate i'm mm. um, really big fans of them um the one sort of in terms of an well, not a negative but something that surprised me about this side was the lack of um the dragons 5-8 like in king dogea i thought he'd be a, a sniff there even if it was the 14 or something but um he misses out and ryan hutchinson wasn't named initially but i think he's um, with the squad now because Michael Wong is out. Yep. Um, he's a good footballer too, so just watch for him to come in as well. I, I thought those two guys were probably hard done by to miss the initial squad. But um, overall, I think the back line's really, really strong. And obviously you've got Kobe Black leading them around, who's a really good footballer. Yeah, there's plenty to talk about that Queensland side. We'll get there soon, mate. And good to see, you know, there's a good sprinkle of first graders throughout here, like the New South Wales side, obviously Chevy Stewart, Jesse McLean, a few getting around there, a few on the Queensland side as well. Man, I have loved what I've seen. We'll get to him soon, but this uh, Purdue kid, mm. fuck, he's a talent. Yeah, I've been a big fan of him. Um, I posted on my story, and I got a couple of ribbons for it after. I posted on my story, Jackson Purdue will be a star, and about five minutes later, he um, scored that length of the field try yeah. in, the NRL, in, in the NRL trial. What a cracker um, that was. Yeah, insane. But, like, just his effort areas um, really stood out to me in that game. And then, obviously, he had that highlight reel, which now everybody knows him from. But um, since then, i paid a close close eye to him. I have not seen a kid be able to take over a game of football like he has. Mm. Um, Mal Meninga Cup, he went back, played for the Mackay Cutters. Um, I think second game back, Mackay Cutters, mind you, at this point were 0-3. Um, they take on, I think it was Northern Pride down 14 nil. He just goes, nah, I'll, I'll do this myself. Mm. Sets up a try, scores one, and then has hands in the last one. They ended up winning in 20 minutes. So, Gun to head, his best position? Halfback. Yeah. I, I, I do think he's a halfback. I know he's a really good fullback too. Like I think whatever suits the Cowboys the most in the long run is where you'll find him playing. Yeah, okay. It's going to be interesting over the next – obviously Scotty Drinkwater there, but Chad getting older. They've got Jay Clifford there. Very interesting halfback could end up being the one for him. Yeah, that makes it tough though because they also have Tom Duffy there who I've, who've got of really course, high opinions yeah. of. So um, whether they fit uh, Purge or Duffy into that spot could get interesting. Yeah, because fuck, he's been impressive in first grade. All right, mate, let's get into the New South Wales side. Now, I know you mentioned before uh, they've obviously picked the two McLean brothers who are on the left side for the New South Wales Cup, Panthers, Hayden Buchanan and Michael Gabriel from the Cronulla Sharks. Um Two guys that play left side as well. Uh, why is this important to you? Why does this stand out? I think just defensively and especially like you you have to have Casey and Jesse on the same edge. Yep. Like you can't swap those two. Like I just think that combination will be way too lethal. Um, obviously Jesse a really talented finisher and Casey a really strong body that's able to attract defenders. So I think that combination will be lethal for them. They work defensively. They work together for Penrith. Um, so then you're left with Hayden Buchanan and Michael Gabriel on the right edge. Michael Gabriel is a left edge centre um, and he has had defensive issues um, in the past. Um, so I want to see how that plays out where – and he's got Buchanan on his inside who's a little bit of a smaller body. I rate Buchanan very highly, but um, he is a little bit of a smaller body. So I think defensively those two playing on the opposite side of the field to what they usually are mm. um, accustomed to, it does make a big difference. And, you know, most people that play footy will, will attest to that like – playing on the right side versus playing on the left side, you just see the game differently. Yeah, it really has shocked me in the last few weeks, especially when we – and, you know, I know it's easy to say in hindsight, but 
we all said it before the game, like when Sua Lee was picked at right centre, like to me, I just went, fuck, that's a big ask for a kid. And once again, maybe it's easy in hindsight, but you look at, you know, the way that he made that tackle, it was with his right shoulder, his right foot was leading. Like it makes a difference defending on the other side, especially when you're in, you know, this sort of arena where it's rep footy, you've only got a week to prepare with new guys around you. Uh, it is a really interesting talking point. Uh, mate, the hooker, Matty Arthur. I personally think he's potentially already the best nine at Parramatta. I wonder if there's been a bit of politics that's maybe kept him out of it. I would have had him in first grade already. I know that you've been huge on him for ages. I'm very keen to see him get this opportunity. Yeah, it'll be good. And this will be his first time in a while playing against this age group too. Like he's played a couple of years. So um, I think he'll really shine. Last time we saw him in the under-19s age group was the SG Ball Grand Final last mm. year. Um, and he had some huge plays. I think um, by the looks of him, he's just a big game player. Like he gets up for it and he makes a whole heap of tackles. I um, I won't say like I necessarily agree that he's the best hooker at the club currently. Like I do th- I do still like Brendan Hands there, but I would have debuted him five weeks ago. Yeah, I, I think we'll, we'll, we're talking in the green room before and you made a very good point. Hands nine, him 14, perfect, I think. Yeah, that like Brendan Hands, good footballer. He can't play 80. Yeah. Like, defensively he might, you know, lapse it towards the end of a game and that's why Joey Lussick got brought back into the side. But I think Matty Arthur's a better footballer than Joey Lussick personally. Now, mate, when it comes to the halves, we'll talk about Mitch Woods a little bit later. That's our big matchup in this game. But Jake Elliott from the Sydney Roosters, talk to me about him. Yeah, he's been playing halfback for the Roosters New South Wales Cup this year and I think he's a lot better as a six. Um I've really liked what he's done this year, though, like across SG Ball, New South Wales Cup. He played Jersey Flag last year. It was really instrumental for them uh, in making the grand final. Um, really good ball runner. I think he'll work perfectly with Mitchell Woods, mm. um, and that's sort of what um, he would have picked this side on, who's going to work best with Mitchell Woods, and I think that was going to be Jake Elliott. Yeah, Woods being a real genuine seven. Yeah. Good little match up there. Uh, mate, for me, I want to give a little shout-out to the second row from the Canberra Raiders, Noah Martin. I uh, was down there a few weeks ago and watched him play. Um, talented, but also just a fucking lunatic, which I love. Yeah, I love that, especially in this arena. Like, you got to have a little bit of mongrel about you, a little bit of lunatic about you to succeed, and I think he could be an enforcer that really goes after this game. Yeah, I think for Canberra Raiders fans, obviously, Chevy Stewart, the fullback, uh, he, he's one to watch as well. I'm really looking forward, mate. I... Personally, I thought Chevy was probably the most underwhelming player out of the game last year. Had far from his best game, Chevy. Uh, but he's, as you know, you, you pointed out on Instagram the other day, he's improved so much over the last 12 months. I'm very – and I, I, I wonder, mate, because I didn't expect the Raiders to let him play this either. I wonder if it's got something to do with that. Yeah, I think it might have to do with that, you know, like a little bit of redemption too because like last year, um, it might sound harsh, but he was poor. Like, yeah. Um, he obviously conceded a couple tries just based off defensive lapses and stuff like that. But I think he really, really worked on that. Ricky would have been in his ear about it. Yeah. Um, and it's also just like the level of maturity that he's shown. Like last year he was trying to look for space. And he was trying to come up with a highlight play. I just think when Chevy plays direct and he's attacking the line, um, he'll create space naturally just because of how freak of a footballer he is. Yeah, big game for Chevy. Really looking forward to seeing how he goes. Mate, uh, a bloke that you mentioned to me off camera, and I might throw to you to talk about him, Zane Harrison in Jersey 14. Yeah, I think he's one of the ones that's going going under the radar at the moment. Um, had an unreal Malmeninga Cup season. Um, he's playing schoolboys for Queensland. Um, obviously goes to Palm Beach, Corumban. Um, and, yeah, he was the leader of that Tweed Seagulls side that went undefeated and won that Malmeninga Cup side. He was the man of the match in the grand final. Um, with Kobe Black and Mitchell Wood stealing all the headlines, I think he could be one that comes into um, equations really soon. Yeah, up at the Gold Coast Times at the moment, I've I heard during the week they're desperate to hold on to him. Uh, that'll be interesting. Jeez, mate, the Titans can produce a fucking halfback. Yeah, they've got plenty through the ranks, but unfortunately they can't um, get one to lead their side. Yeah, they, 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 they can't bring one all the way through, but my God, they can find them. Yeah. Uh, mate, who else in this side stands out for you from this blue side? Who else you want to touch on? Um, I want to talk about the forward pack here of Loco and uh, Fenefo Seve. Um, we were talking before about the Seve v VAR matchup, and we also touched on that last time I was here um, coming into the Roosters Bulldogs game or whatever. But like Fenefo Seve, he's just an absolute freak. I think he'll he'll lead this game from the front. Um, and then Loco, he was part of the um, 
the Dragons, SG Ball winning side, mm. and he had an absolute blind of that game. Um, so, yeah, those two big bodies in forces, they'll go after this game and they'll really lay the platform for your Mitchell Woods, your Jake Elliott's, your Chevy Stewart's. Can I ask you, mate, the – and I'm, I'm, I'm shooting a blank on his name – the lock forward for the Dragons from the SG Ball? Uh, Finau Latu. Was he available for this? Was he? Yeah, he was. Um, and there was a bit of, well, controversy, people messaging me, comments and all that sort of stuff, like where, why wasn't he picked? Yeah. Um, he's still got another year to do this. Yeah, So okay. I, I think you'll see him in this game next year. But, you know, it's a tough forward pack to pick. And like yeah. Blake Steep, Blake Steep was always going to be the first picked in that jersey. Yeah. But when Blake Steep was ruled out, I expected Finnau to come in. Yeah, okay. uh, But obviously he hasn't, so. Yeah, no, I, I guess that is the other news. Obviously, Blake Steep represented playing for the Sydney Roosters this week, so he's out of that side. Mate, can I ask you, Jersey 18, Connor Votano from the Newcastle Knights. Um, you've seen more of him than me, but the couple of times I've seen him, he just looks to be such a talented footballer. I wasn't sure where he's going to – well, I sort of expected him to play fullback because I didn't think Chevy Stewart would play. Would you have found a spot for him in here somewhere or what? I would have chucked him on the sting. Yeah. Um, he's he's played a lot of centre winger um, since coming up through the grades and um, he's he is a really talented winger as well in my opinion. But obviously fullback's your first choice for him. Um, I probably would have had him on the wing. Um, in saying that, there was another wing option that did also get left out of this entirely, Jesse Williams. We yeah. spoke about him last time. I thought that he would have gotten that spot. Um, but, yeah, Conor Vitano, talented footballer. He's got another year of this as well. So I, I expect to see him in the fullback jersey this time next year. Fuck, that'll be exciting. Him in a year's time. That'll be unreal. Anyone else you want to touch on from this side, mate? Uh, just this bench rotation, mate. Uh, Halangahu, Lars Tuavati. Um, Jacob Halangahu, really talented back rower. Um, just powerful. Loves contact. Um, I spoke about him last time I was here. Um, as a bit of a hit man and, you know, like the, what I said before, how he loves contact. He won player of the match in the SG Ball Grand Final, mm-hmm. City Country Origin, and now he's coming into this game as a 17-year-old against wow. under-19s. Um, he could he probably has every chance to go three for three if he gets good minutes here. Wouldn't that be incredible? Yeah, it'd be an unreal start. That is wild. Love to see that. Um, yeah, anyone else, mate? Yeah, I was just going to finish on, on Lars and Tuivati. I think when they come on the field, that's when momentum will change. Um, Queensland's bench has to contain them. Yep. Um, Lars, obviously, Tom Leroy, Lars' uh, young bloke. Yep. Um, really good footballer um, in the front row. And then Sam Tuivati played in this game last year. When him and Luron Patea came on, that completely shifted momentum. I think Queensland were up 14-10. Yep. Um, him and Luron came on and then they just took control of the middle um, and shifted momentum. And I think a similar thing can happen this year with Lars and Tuivati. Love that. Yeah, Lars could definitely have worse genes about him. Yeah. Could have had my genes. Jeez, his old man was one big bit of gear. Yeah, Proud boring. New South Welshman. Yeah. All right, mate, let's move to Ben Teo's side for Queensland under 19s. Uh, obviously, mate, the fullback, we already spoke about him briefly, Jackson Perdue. Love a Jackson spelt with an X, always a positive. Uh, he sort of said that you think his best position is halfback. I think, I think coming into this game, I'm kind of glad he's at fullback, just for entertainment value. Um, I reckon he can absolutely light it up in this one. Yeah, I would have put him at fullback too just because you've got so many gun halves yep. uh, for Queensland. So I think he's just you've, – you've got to watch him. Like he could just take this game by the scruff of the neck um, at any given moment. Like he's just one of those footballers. Yeah, I think if Queensland are to win this game, I'm very confident – his Paul Prince will be all over it at yeah. some point. He'll come up with a big play. Yeah, 100%. Uh, let's talk, mate. Israel Liotta. Now, I believe he played last year. I have just been told by a lot of people that this guy is just a bit of a genetic freak. Yeah, it doesn't make sense when you when you look at him. Like, he's quick, he's big, he's um, got a long flowing mullet out the back. Like, Love he's that. just, <laughs> yeah, no, he's just um, everything that sort of the modern day winger. Um, sort of encapsulates. Yeah. Um, really good finisher. So, and he's good out of yardage too. So, um, you'll see a lot of him. They'll go to his edge a lot, I think. Um, especially he's on. He's a left side player. We talked about before the right edge defence of New South Wales. Um, he could be one that you know, if you could bet on this game. I'd be having him anytime. Don't mind that. Mate, Tyrese Tate, I've seen a little bit of him at the Roosters. Uh, he's gone straight from SG Ball to New South Wales Cup. 
Looks to be a talented kid. Yeah, I like him. Um, he made his New South Wales Cup debut a couple of weeks ago and all the areas which I still hadn't ticked off on him, like in terms of could he be a first grader, he ticked all of those boxes when he made that debut. Um, defensively, out of yardage, um, was really good. But he's, he is, first and foremost, just a really tall, fast, athletic um, winger. Really good try scorer, breaks the line um, almost at will. Or if he's given just a little bit of space, he'll take it. Um, so, yeah, I'm really excited to see how he goes. And this um, this sort of back three of Purdue, Leota and, and Tate could come up with a lot of their points. What about the centre mate, Sam Stephenson? Obviously, his old man played first grade back in the day. He's at the Titans and I think he's signed on like a two or three year deal up there. Yeah, they, they like him a lot up there. Everything that I've heard has been positive. Um, he played for that Tweed Seagull side that I mentioned before and you know, he's just a really dynamic footballer. Um, I think him and Tyrese Tate are very similar. I think Stevenson's, uh, Stevenson's got a little bit of a better passing game. Um, he, he'll draw in plenty of um, defenders and, and create space for for whoever's outside him, Tate or Leota. I'm not sure uh, what side they're going to put Stevenson and Nonu on. Okay. Um, but, yeah, that'll be good to watch on the day. Now, mate, when we get to the halves, obviously one name that stands out, Kobe Black, uh, up there at the Brisbane Broncos. has been a lot of hype around him. We'll get to him very soon in our big matchup. But the 5'8 jersey, I think, is interesting, mate. Now, granted, Stanley Hewan, I haven't seen too much of him. I have seen a lot of Reese Foley over the last few weeks playing down here at the Roosters, and I think Foley's a pretty good footballer. Stanley Hewan, would he have been your choice at 5'8? He wouldn't have, mm. but... Like, he is the incumbent 5'8". Like, yeah. he played this time last year. Um, who, so, who does he play for? Where, where, where uh, is he Melbourne. From? He's, a, he's a Melbourne player. So. Uh, okay, right. He's been playing Jersey Flag down there. Um, really powerful guy. Like, I've, I've talked to a couple of people and I've watched him play, obviously, and, you know, he could be just as effective as a front rower as a 5'8". Yeah. He does have a pretty handy chip uh, chipping game. Um, but, yeah, his ball running is really powerful. But I personally wouldn't have had him in the side. Um my first pick was uh, King Togi. I mentioned him before. Yep. Um, and Reese Foley was obviously there as well. Um, but, yeah, he is the incumbent 5'8". And, you know, what sort of message would that send if you had him last year and age up but you don't have him this year? Yep. Fair shout. What about the forward pack, mate? Uh, the two edge back rowers I'm very interested in. Obviously, Jamal Shibasaki, we've seen play for the Cowboys over the last few weeks. Um, been good in his time he's had but hasn't really exploded yet. Mate, everyone I talk to in Queensland talk about this kid like he's gonna abs- like he's gonna have a ten out of ten career. I'm so excited to see him back in this grade to see how he goes. Yeah, they can find a back rower, can't they? The Cowboys. <laughs> not short on him. Yeah, not short at all. And that's the one thing that I'm concerned about with his development is how much game time does he get in the future behind the likes of Finifuniaki, Luki and all that. But, you know, he's just an absolute gun football. He played last year in this game off the bench. Um, was really impressive. He was obviously impressive in his debut. Um, powerful ball runner and, you know, he's a guy to watch in this game. Obviously with the extra experience over the other guys, he could really take this game over on that edge. He's got to come in with plenty of confidence to this one. Talk about the other back row, mate. Zach Garten, he's obviously out the Dolphins. Uh, we mentioned before he's got a bit of a different body shape. I believe he sort of grew up being a 13 slash 6. What have you got on him? Yeah, so he actually played as a 13 um, in the under-17s. So yep. that's where that comes from. Um, he's just a really good, like, line runner. Um, he's just powerful. Like, he's stocky. Like, he does have what you said, like, that weird body shape, but he's stocky. Works super hard in defense too. Like, you'll see him make – he'll probably make 40 tackles in his stint on this game. Yeah. Like, um, I like him a lot. I've said it on um, your original post about the Queensland under-19s guys. Like, those two, that back row pairing is elite. Yeah. Signed until 2026 with the Dolphins. So Peter O'Sullivan signs up long term. He doesn't seem to miss too many of them. So a very interesting watch. What about the front rowers um, and the nine, mate? The, the hooker, I haven't seen too much of. Well, what's his story? Uh, so he's at the Broncos. I think he's playing for winner Manly in Malmeninga Cup. Yep. Um, looks like a really crafty player. Him and Kobe Black have a really good combination. So I'm keen to see those two link up again. Obviously, um, Kobe was at. Um, I think Kobe was at Burley this year and Cameron was at Winner Manly, so they haven't played together since that uh, pre-season trial um, for the Broncos. But, yeah, I'm keen to see them two link up again because they're deadly when they're, when they're together. Anyone else on this side you want to touch on, mate? It's Queensland side. Um, yeah, Lewis Simons off the bench um, for the Dolphins. He's 
probably a Jermaine Hopgood type of player, so you'll like him. Oh, boy. <laughs> um, no, but he's oh. he, he's got a really, really good work ethic. Um, and, yeah, he just he, he carries it hard every time. You won't see a whole heap of highlight plays out of him. He does have highlight reels, but, you know, that's in under-19s, under-17s, weakish defence, but um, he's just going to non-stop work. I've heard good things about Harry Armstrong too. Yeah, really tall back rower. Um, he's obviously on the bench because you've got that garden ship Asaki yeah. pairing, but um, he's dynamic. He could really um, come on in the back row and do a job for them. I think he's got another year of this too, I think. Um, so he could be one that next year really stands out. And I love, mate, Jersey 19. I haven't seen him play or anything, but Cooper Bye, obviously the son of Marcus Bye. I don't know if Marcus Bye means as much to you. <laughs> Little whippersnipper, but, mate, Marcus yeah. Bai, uh, when I was a kid growing up, my God, he just couldn't be tackled. Honestly, um, I was listening to Hello Sport the other day. Tell yeah. me they were reacting to this side and they mentioned that he was the son of Marcus Bai. I had no idea who he was. No <laughs> idea. Oh, mate. Marcus Bai was the OG. You know how yeah. occasionally um, when Dior Day was at Hello Sport, he'd wear that – purple storm jumper with the white bolts on it just a bit of an odd jumper that's the jumper i remember marcus by wearing it's the player i always think of when i see that jersey he was an absolute juggernaut um anyone else in that queensland side mate um i think we've touched on most of them and we'll obviously get to the um uh, main guy soon actually just quickly de la Vara, um, i was just about to say let's yeah. lead off our one-on-one -on -one battles with these two front row forwards because I know that you're very hot and heavy for them, which I love. Talk yeah. to me. Yeah, no, I I love watching these two go at it. Like D Dila and Fanafo, they've just both got unbelievable like controlled aggression. They're yeah. big bodies. They'll chase each other all game, and don't be surprised if sparks fly in the in the heat of battle. Emotion obviously at a high. Um, <laughs> run at straights will be hectic. Love that. Um, Fanifo Seve, really good defensively. I think he'll be asking for d -Lar to run at his right shoulder all yeah. game. But last time these two matched up, Fanifo got the better of them. Um, I said last time that I probably would rather have Seve long-term, but they're both unbelievable footballers. I was uh, When I was over in New Zealand a few weeks ago, uh, d -Lar and and his brother were playing – was it Cup of Flea? I, th I think it was Cup. Cup. Yeah, it would have been Cup. would have been Cup, yeah, and – Mate, they had a crowd. Like I reckon, there was a hundred people in the crowd. I reckon forty of them were their their family, and they both they both came off the field and like they were standing about three meters away from me. And they're both just big as houses. They're huge, mm. and just mate, the amount of time they had for everyone in that family photo, they were they were embarrassed as all hell. All the boys were laughing at them, and they were just you just tell they just seemed to be two really good fellas to me. Yeah, good good fellas, good family. Um, yeah, they. Dela just I've, I haven't heard a negative word said about yeah. it ever. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. If anything, like when you when I was watching him interact with people, I thought, fuck, he might be too polite to be a front row forward in rugby yeah. league. But he doesn't take a backward step. Yeah, he's got that classic case of uh, white line fever. The moment he crosses that chalk, he's just a different person. Love that. Absolutely not a problem I ever had. Funnily enough. All right, <laughs> now let's put the main attraction up in lights. Probably for me. Um, I think, you know, two of the bigger – like outside of the guys that have played first grade, I think these are probably the two biggest names coming into this game. You've got Mitch Woods from the Canterbury Bulldogs, uh, who his rise over the last few years has – would it be fair to say unmatched? Yeah, I haven't really seen um, an under-19s origin game or any sort of junior game with as much hype around the halfbacks. Mm. Like Mitchell Woods, obviously – so I've spoken a lot about him. Really talented footballer, and you get you get posts, uh, you get comments on random posts about these sorts of games, and they're just flooded with "Oh, Mitchell Woods, this Mitchell Woods, that." Like there is that much hype around this kid, um, and if he lives up to it, great. Like if he lives up to that hype, he could honestly lead the Bulldogs to the promised land. Like, he's that good. Well, like, it's worth noting with with Canterbury, and this isn't you know my opinion is what I've been told by people at Canterbury that like when Mitch Moses was off contract and they sort of – they entered the negotiations but part of – uh, sorry, part of Canterbury sort of went, let's not go too hard. We have got Mitch Woods. Like yeah. that's how confident they are that this kid – you know, um, get the exact details off you but he's essentially gone Harold Matt's player of the year into the next year SG ball when he's meant to be – he's a year young for that. Like it's just – <laughs> his rise has been unbelievable to watch. I've never seen someone do that and I was looking back through – um, the history of like uh, pl uh, player of the tournaments and all that for yeah. Matthews SG ball. 
Obviously, you can only get back so far because they're no good at keeping records. Mm. Um, somebody fix that up. If, <laughs> if, if there's anybody that can get into the record books and, you know, post something that makes my job easier. But, you know, nobody's done it. Like yeah. going from Howard Matthews Player of the Year as a 16-year-old to the next year as a 17-year-old, going on 18, obviously. I, I don't know when he's exactly mm. turned 18. But to win those two, um, win player of the tournament, those two age groups back to back is unheard of. I think it's worth noting as well, like in their Harold Matt season, they, they played Penrith finals week one. They got beat by like 50-odd, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, so round nine. Round nine, round yeah. Round nine, and they got beat 52 to six. And then they've played them the very next week in finals week one. Yeah. And towed them up <sighs> and then ended up winning the comp. So Unbelievable turnaround. Yeah. Just insane. I think Crazy. it was like an 80-point turnaround or something. Fuck. Wow. Now, Kobe Black, mate, um, obviously – for a lot of people, I think we saw him in the trial at the start of this year for yep. Brisbane. Um, looked very, very impressive there. What are your thoughts on him? Oh, I think he's a really good footballer. And this is what's going to define this matchup is the king games of both of them. Like Mitchell Woods obviously has the AFL background. Sydney Swans are really, really trying hard to get him. Um, his kicking game's enormous. Kobe Black's kicking game is probably, I'd give it a tick better. Yeah. Um, so he's going to really control this game. One thing to note about these two guys, though, is that they are an age up. They haven't filled into their frames yet, so you might see them get targeted defensively and all that sort of stuff, and people make a big deal out of this, like whatever. Mitchell Moses was one of the worst defenders in the comp a few years ago, and now he's yep. one of the best. Like These halves, what I'm looking for is control the game, control what you can control, and that's you know your kicking game and um, organising, organisational skills, which these two both have in spades. I think it's a very, very good point you bring up, mate, because – People nowadays are just looking for any negative they possibly can to bring someone down with. And I think it's a great, just fantastic to point out that, yeah, they are smaller bodies. They're children still. They're not They're not fully grown yet. Uh, and you make you make a great point about Mitch Moses. Mitch Moses couldn't tackle a tackling bag at this age. Mm. Now he's he's running out for New South Wales and I feel so confident defensively he's going to do a job. Handled Dave Fafita last year. Um, yeah, very, very excited about these two. If you had to sign one on a long-term deal, I'm going to put you on the spot. I will go out and say mine at the moment would be Mitch Woods, uh, but I probably haven't seen as much as Kobe Black. I, I didn't expect you to say his kicking game was better than Woods. That's very impressive. Who would you go for? I actually got asked this question the other day and I refused to answer it because I said whoever whoever I say will come out and have a stinker. Whoever I don't say will be man of the match. But How good's the content going? I, honestly, I think I'd take Mitchell Woods yep. just – like I think they're both unreal talents. Um, they're very, very similar in their like long kicking game and whatnot. And I think they both can be, if they live up to the potential, live up to the hype, whatever. I think they can be that ideal mold of like a premiership halfback. You know what I mean? This the biggest game of both of their careers, would you say? Or yeah, yeah, yep. Definitely. As far as being on TV and the pressure, the hype around them, uh, being on TV. You know, even just generally like a state of origin, would you place it above a grand final for an SG ball game? Like they'd be on a similar level, I'd say. Yeah, I, I think the added pressure around this and the expectation and on TV, you know, I, I would probably have this as yeah top gong. Um, yep. Mate, give me a prediction for this game. Put your fantastic New South Wales bias to the side. What, what are you thinking for this one? Um, look... <sighs> It will sound biased, but I don't think New South Wales win it. Mm. Um, they've won the last two by very convincing margins. I think this one will be um, a lot closer. I do look at this Queensland side and I think it's probably one of the most well-rounded sides that they've fielded since this sort of came back from that COVID period. But um, I think New South Wales probably, you know, in that sort of 10, 10 to 15 point range. I just, mate, I, I just look at that that left edge and, fuck, they, they, these two McLean boys to me just look so fucking special. Yeah, I just think th this will just be bash them through the middle, lock or seve. Like, it'll, be, it'll be a tight contest early because Queensland do have a good forward pack. They've got a couple of workhorses in there that will cut off this starting forward pack. But then I think once Helen Gahu, Lars Tuivati come on, I think that's when the floodgates could open. A little bit of fatigue sets into the game. I think Mitchell Woods, Chevy Stewart start to combine. Um, Jesse McLean, Casey McLean on that left edge and um, could be trouble. I'm going to say New South Wales by eight. 
And, mate, I'm going to take a little smoky MOM. I'm going to take Noah Martin. Oh, man of the match, Noah Martin, yeah. What are you looking at? I, I like that. Um, honestly, you know who I'll go man of the match? I'll go Matty Arthur, man of the match. Love that. Um, I think he'll make at least 50 tackles because um, he's just – like he's just – He's going to get targeted in the middle and he'll just keep snapping and keep snapping him. Um, he's been targeted a lot in New South Wales Cup and I don't think teams have figured out that yet that it doesn't work. Yeah, okay. Um, and then in an attack, like that SG ball grand final, um, Ethan Sanders obviously got a man of the match and he was, he was good in that game, but I thought he was – I thought Arthur was the best player on the field. Scores were level, sort of 12 all I think it was. He just goes bang 40-20 into bang try to Charlie Geimer and flip the game on its head. And I think he's a big game player. I think he'd be right up for this. So you've got Arthur MOM, New South Wales by? 10. 10. Love that. Fantastic. Now, guys, both of us will be out there tomorrow night at Leichhardt Oval. 5.45 kickoff for the women's game, 7.45 for the men's game. There's a curtain raiser before that for the women's game. I'm forgetting which schools that they are. Uh, I'm not sure. Not sure. Okay. Um, but I think that's at like 3 p.m. or something like that. Yeah. I won't be out there that early. I'll make sure I'm out there for the women's game. You'll hopefully be the same. Yeah, I'm going to be there for the women's game. And just on that women's game, shout out to the McEwen family. They've got the um, back rowers in both the men's and the women's game, Jermaine and Eva. How good's that? Um, yeah, both wearing the exact same jersey, number two. So that's good unreal. stuff. All time. So we'll be out there at Leichhardt over for the CBA Bowl tomorrow night. If you would like tickets to come along, guys, it's going to be a fantastic night. I know it's a Thursday night. Not ideal, uh, but it's going to be a great night out there. Some two great games of footy. You get to see all the young guns, the stars of the future. We'll be up on the hill having a few brewskis, getting stuck into a few feeds. Really looking forward to catching up with you all. Link is in the description for half price tickets, two for one tickets, I should say, for that game. Uh, CBA merch still available at rugbyleagueguru.com.au give you the hot tip won't get to you before tomorrow night but if you would like to grab some there is still them some there plenty of hats a few jumpers left over so head over to the website there to grab those all the links will be in the description and we'll see you tomorrow night at Leichhardt Oval make sure you go and follow the short ball quick little shout out for you mate where can they find you uh, go follow me, Instagram at the short ball with an underscore at the end and then TikTok, YouTube as well. YouTube, I'm really starting to crank up the content over there. Love that. Absolutely yeah. love that. Make sure you go follow the short ball guys, like genuinely the best in the game when it comes to your junior rugby league and all your young guys and everything is the reason why I've got Jacob in there because he is the best at what he does. So make sure you go and follow the short ball on all your platforms there and we'll see you tomorrow night at Leichhardt Oval.